Welcome to Mentorship Monday and another edition of the Quant Trader's Guide to Algabox. Today I want to go over the specific details of the Beast Mode strategies. Make sure, if you haven't done so already, follow us over here on Facebook. You can forget Twitter, substitute that with Instagram. And here, of course, on YouTube, make sure you're over here in our Discord chat. We're going to talk about the details of this very, very powerful advanced level strategy. This is not something you're going to do necessarily on day number one, but we want to go over the details today in our Mentorship Monday on one of the more difficult strategies. I'm going to show you a sneak peek at specifically what that is and talk about how we're going to go through um, this trade end to end. So stay tuned. Let's do this. Alrighty then, so let's come on down here into our training window. So tonight, uh, first let's go to a couple of prerequisites. Three prerequisites for, and some housekeeping before we get started. Number one, install the two-week free trial if you are brand new with us. And of course, if you're a member, that should already be on your list and got that installed. That's one. Two, like and drop a comment down below telling me if you've already installed this or not. That's number two. And then number three, hit that subscribe and enable the notifications so you don't miss the next strategy walkthrough videos and live streams that we're gonna be doing. Here we go. And this is, of course, on the new YouTube channel. We've got our old one archived. This is all NinjaTrader 8. So get ready and get your stuff installed with the NinjaTrader 8 ahead of time. All right. Now, some of the things we're gonna to talk to you tonight on the list of things, let me uh, go through the list on this strategy that you need to know um, as you go into this. So if you are taking notes, and you should be, here are the items on our list that we're going over on the Beast Mode trade tonight. So first of all, let's give our title here. Beast Mode Strats. Okay. There are number one, the time of day. Time of day, we want to go over the Flowmaster. How to use the Flowmaster internally to recognize when these are showing up. Um, we want specific identifiers. We were looking for the identifiers. Going to get those on our list. Indentifiers. Not going to indent, although I was thinking about intenting. Identifiers. And let's see. Specific details on the strategies themselves. What was the other one? The three um, examples. And results. All right, so here are the things we're going to be covering here tonight on the Beast Mode strategies. And the specific example today that we're going to go through is this one. So if you haven't picked this one up, you can go pick up this uh, screenshot down in the strats section on the left-hand side in our Discord. So with some of that housekeeping that I said, you should already have this installed. If you don't, like I said, make sure you do that. And the number one thing you need to be here in Discord where we're chatting about this is here in the public lobby. And if you want to learn where those strats are located on the left-hand menu inside of Discord, scroll down and you're going to go into the education section. Each of these is labeled with a strat name over here on the left. And tonight we are going over the beast mode strategies. There are multiples to get into those. This is a more advanced. So if you're trying to pick out, hey, you know, is this necessarily a starter thing? You need to be aware of when this is showing up, but it's not just as simple as some of our other strategies, particularly if you want to learn some of those, we tell you you need to start with lessons one through six down here in the description of this video. You're going to find lessons one through six. And of course, here on our YouTube channel, these are some of the core things like our reversal Richie, the scalp strategy the, called the plover, the headshot, harmonic dot, and five ways, of course, you can double your income, etc. Those are in our list on an entire playlist. You can scroll to the right, click that button, and watch all the rest of our strategies. But you really need to start with down here on every video that we've got here to pause this one. Scroll down here underneath um, the videos in the descriptions, there is a list right here. Lessons run through six that you should have already gone through before you get into these. So if you want to kind of get into these again this is mentorship monday if you are in our mentorship program pause this video if you're watching this tonight go make sure that you have watched these particularly the first lessons one through six then come on back and start chewing away at the specific strategies want to get that out of the way because i want you guys to succeed with what we're doing all right um now it is monday so before we get into monday i would say things about strategies like why do i need to add another strategy to my repertoire what's the point and the purpose well if there are no results that match up. Like, why would you, if you're going to get the same PL on any given day, then why would I add another strategy to my repertoire? Well, let's start with looking at last week's results from our members. Um, I want to hit this one here today, though. Pip thing is absolutely smashing. It's 60% profitable today. 
$8,500 today. These are not from last week or anything. Profit factor 1.56, winners being 1.5 times the size of the losers. Excellent work there, Pip Thing. And there are a lot of other strategy results that we saw from our members in the crew, as well as myself, you can take a look at today. But let's go back and roll back to last week to see, you know, look, look at the consistency of what we do. Things that we do here, this is not just the Furu Guru going out there photoshopping their PL, showing some, you know, picture of a PL result. We are literally showing the performance for stats from our members, and we encourage our members to post those. So that's why they do it. I appreciate all you guys who post your stats here in our room. Excellent, excellent work. Uh, so here is Mike last week, 1600. This is from Friday. Uh, sharp ratio, 12.84, hundred percent for Mike on Friday. That's not normal. I'm not going to say, look, we're not sitting here trying to go, look, you're going to hit hundred percent profitable all the time. There are members in our crew on occasion that we do. In fact, I had a hundred percent win rate today. That's pretty rare for me. I don't always do that. In fact, I, I kind of P90 my way through strategy. So I will take small losses along the way. It's kind of rare for me to hit a hundred percent day, but those do occur. Excellent work there, Mike from Friday hitting hundred percent. Um, this one is, what's his screen name? This is Superman. Superman, 8.62 profit factor. What does that mean? His winners are 8.6 times the size of his losers. $1,237.50, 75% profitable. And again, most of these people are starting with a $2,500 account when they are starting out. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is all relative because some people have been asking recently, been like, yeah, but they probably have large accounts. That's why they're able to do that. No, this is e-minis and micros that we are trading and that does not require a PDT rule. And we're literally starting all of our members after our 120 day program with $2,500 accounts. Here's a $780 day from, sorry, I missed the name of the person in there. Um, 24 trades, 91% profitable profit factor. The big number that we always show right there, the ratio of winners to losers, eight times the size of his losers for Joey. That was Joey's stuff. Uh, Pimp Scampy, I love this guy's name, hilarious. Um, good dude right there. 500 bucks, that's awesome. If you're on target with the $500 plan that we have, that means that we are looking at, that is a six figure year if you are netting that $500 per day, which is again, how we start our members. That's sort of the first target goal, 75% profitable. And that profit factor, obsession, close that 1.55 on that awesome work there. I'm going to run through the rest of these quickly. Leanne, $2,400, 79% profitable, 1.84 profit factor. Is this CG? $2,400 for CG. Awesome work, sir. 8.14 profit factor, 79%. Um, who do we got here? This is Sting Ox. Thought I was done for the day. <laughs> he kept trading anyway. He absolutely crushed it. I believe he had a five-figure day on Friday. Is that 16000 Yes. Huge. He just kept trading on Friday, 16,072% profitable, 3.67 profit factor, meaning his winners are almost four times the size of his losers. Awesome work, Sting Ox. He's been with us for a while, and I think he's got, uh, he's even brought his uh, sister and brother in law in. Awesome work. 30, uh, what do we got? 90% profitable, 10 profit factor. Holy shnikes. JC is the one I've been looking out for. I've been saying, JC, you know, from the beginning, you could just tell the way that JC came in and attacked this note taking, etc. This guy is one to, if you want to learn from somebody, I mean, besides myself, if you want to watch a member, check out JC. He's just absolutely smashing it. Excellent work. 3,300 for Derek the Rick. 3,200 for Durr on Friday. Again, Friday can sometimes be a bit of a tricky day. Uh, but, you know, with Algobox, it makes it a little bit easier. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. There we go. $2,600 for Brandon B. KC calling it a day at 2,200, 88% uh, profitable, absolutely stunning, outstanding work. 12,000, here's another five figure day. Pip thing is smashing. He's a little bit of a larger account. This is, you know, we'll, we've stated this up front. We've talked about different goal sets. He's got a different goal set than some of the other members in our crew, but absolutely smash it. If you guys wanna go through the rest of the stats there from today. But the reason that I'm showing this, showing this ahead of time is again, it's Mentorship Monday. Why learn another strategy? What is the point and the purpose of what we do? You need to have results. And around here we say results matter. I would rather just show you, just go, you know, here it is, right? This is what and why we do what we do in here. And then I'm gonna show you how we do it. So let's get into the details of this specific strategy tonight on one of the more advanced. Again, what you're gonna see here today is a little bit more advanced. So let's start with that first item on our list on the time of day. So right here, if you are wondering about this, again, this is part of lessons one through six. That's why I mentioned that at the beginning, but this screenshot comes from that video in those lessons there. You're gonna to need to know how we break down the sessions. Here's the beginning of the day. Here's through the end of the day, intraday. And these are intraday time periods when we trade. Again, our trades are anywhere from you know a minute in length 
to up to 40 minutes tops, but our average right now it, with the speed and the VIX of the market right now is literally around five to eight minutes for our hold times. Now today, the beast mode trade that you're gonna see is a two hour trade. So again, this is why I'm specifically going into the details of this one. So people had a lot of questions around this one today in the room. So I wanted to take today with our mentorship Monday to go specifically into this advanced level strategy. So welcome aboard. Now, the time for this one, 11 to 1 p.m. Okay, that's that beast mode hour. You should have this printed out for yourself if you're one of our members. 11 to 1 p.m. Eastern time. This is the time window in which we are looking for one of these setups. So the first thing that you need to be aware of is you know being aware of your surroundings. What time of day are these more likely? Now, look, these can happen anytime. Okay, we know that. But when do we see them most often? Again, what we are looking to do is add edge to our game with our strategies and this is how i teach you guys this is set people already know they're looking for some of our biggest moves and i don't mean pnl wise but i mean the distance wise we're talking distance number of tick tick captures okay the size that you get into that i'm going to talk about that here in this tonight about how you do our technique called half on half off ad in fact i forgot that was one of our items on the list um yeah i should have added that make sure in your notes this is one item you want to add to that note section Oh, uh, give me yellow, please. Note. One that we missed. Um, this is going to be the half on, half off add technique. Okay, I'm gonna go over this tonight and I'm gonna show you guys a specific video where I really go into even more detail on this technique for writing a big position. One, if you're gonna have that big long ticks um trade how are you going to number one hold on to it psychologically it's a little bit difficult but two i'm going to give you with our system how you can literally visually see you're going to know exactly when there's no guesswork about what we do with algobox that is why our crew is so much different from all the other bs that's on the internet welcome aboard let's get to it so your notes should be there with your um table of contents there for yourself what we're going to be going over and let's get into this specific trade so today this one happened, this is 11 o'clock. I'm just gonna start with an example, walking through specifically how and what we're looking for at these. Okay. So it's around 11 o'clock, hopefully you guys can see that. I think it's a little bit blurry, but just know that this pivot point right here happens to land almost on the dot at 11 o'clock. Now, does it have to land right there? No, somewhere between 11 and 11.30 to 12. Anywhere from that first hour is where we're looking for this trap, okay? So one thing, we know the time of day, okay? So another note is, Looking for the trap pivot. Oops, picot pivot between eleven and eleven thirty Eastern time. Okay, so the first part of what we're looking for, step one. Okay, this is the first thing is looking for a trap. Okay, trap. Step one. the trap okay gotta have the trap now traps those are a little bit difficult to recognize at some point again that's why i said this is one of those that you you know a little more advanced level you need to go through our training strategies this is not necessarily in lesson not forget not necessarily it's not in lessons one through six these are strategy advanced level details that you'll get um in the premium member section when you get to a, a video it's called literally it's a trap Okay, and we talk about specific details around those. I showed you guys a Richie trap the other night in our latest video, so go back and watch that video as well. But if you're wondering about, well, how do I identify a trap? It's not just a pivot, so know that there's more to it. But I'm gonna show you guys how this one showed up, and this one particularly, what type this is. This is a Flowmaster trap setup, and I'm gonna show you how we know what that is. And if you see this, again, one of the other things I showed in those list of notes was, what are the indications that this is about to occur? Because yeah, look, hindsight, anybody can show you something on a chart hindsight. I know it, you know if you're coming into this and you've seen you know, 100 videos on YouTube and people showing, oh, look how it worked right here. Blah, 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 blah. What's different about us is we do it in real time. I'll even show you that here in the room, how uh, not myself, but even one of our members, Adam, earlier today, was actually taking this exact trade. And some of the other members were asking, like, hey, how did you, how did you know to get into that? He has been around a while. He has studied his stuff, and he is one that helps out a lot of our members as well. Not a moderator, not paid by any of us. Literally just another member in our crew absolutely smashed this trade today, as well as taking the reversal once it was done. And I'm gonna show you guys that, and we do that in real time, and you can recognize it with our system. And I'm gonna show you this in real time 
uh, through this example. All right. So first thing we're looking for is that trap. If you can see a trap right here, tell me down below in the comments, do you see the trap right here or do you not? In the comments, let me know because I'm kind of, I want to gauge our audience. Are you guys recognizing the traps? If you've been in my program, do you recognize there's a trap here? If you don't, say, you know, I didn't really see the trap there or yes, totally see the trap on this spot right here. It's a trap, totally a trap right here. And the trap is, this is a bear trap. Okay, you got the, I should have done this in red. Okay, you've got bears looking for the big boog move down. I should take a little bit of a screenshot from the left. This was a deeper move um, all the way down to this location. And it happens to be that when we get these big long runner days where we get the opportunity to ride a full position, it tends to make that switch and the reversal and the big move in the opposite direction between what time? 11 and 11, oh, I'm sorry, 11, 11.30 and up to 12 o'clock. But usually in that first half hour, we see the best setups because we're gonna get that long and lengthy trade. Okay. So we're looking for one of these. This one particularly, this is a Flowmaster trap. Let me get back to yellow if I can, please. All right. Now, if you don't have our system installed, you may not know what this is. And there are three videos as of this, um, session here tonight that you need to go back and watch and learn the Flowmaster stuff. That is parts one, two, and three. So that should also be in your list. Put that on your notes. Go back and watch Flowmaster videos one through three to learn and know how we're doing what we're doing right here because there's going to be two spots here. We need to be able to recognize that is these, uh, what you're seeing on NT8 are marshmallows. Those will soon be converted to crosses. I just uh, later this week or earlier this week, I guess today's Monday, so it would be the weekend. I was kind of got a breakthrough moment and we are going to be drawing our own series of crosses, even though Ninja Trader 8 removed those from their bin, you know, whatever the reasoning was for it, whatever. That's why we have these weird looking marshmallow things instead of the crosses. So if you're watching the old videos and it's talking about the crosses, just so you know, the crosses are the same things as what you're seeing in this video are these marshmallows. In future version, you're going to see the crosses back on. So that's the good news. We'll have those crosshairs back on in future videos. Okay. So right here, Flowmaster Trap. How do we see it? I'm going to draw this on a new screen. So we've got price coming into an area and we have a big kind of big pivot and a go. Okay. What we want to do is find out how do we know, like if you were just to look at a standard chart, this is all you see for price. What does Flowmaster do when it comes in? Okay. So in this case, what we're always looking for is a double cross. Okay. And in this case, we're doing a marshmallow <laughs> that we have to do this. I was hoping to have this um, you know, fixed and corrected before we got into this, but here we go. Okay. So we're looking for a double cross. In this case, the first one came right here. You'll see the two marshmallows on our, on our item in just a moment. Okay. Now what we often do is whenever we see one of these in our room, you will see us draw a horizontal line across one of these. This is our form of support and resistance. When you see lines in our room, these are not typical pivot scenarios. We are literally showing where the identified massive flow volume is coming in and Flowmaster detects algorithms firing off with size and speed. The two combinations are size and speed, what we're seeing, and we have these relative in coloring. So you'll learn that in our other videos, but we're gonna see, first of all, the double cross. Okay, we've got a horizontal line that shows up right here. And um, let's redraw these in here with um, on top of our horizontal so that we can recognize that we got a double cross. And these do not have to be exactly on the same location, but approximately, okay? We know that there is interest coming at this spot. Okay, I purposely drew those in different locations slightly. They are, you know, they don't have to be on top of one another. Now, prior to this, you know, pretend for a minute that you can't see the right-hand side of this, this chart, okay? So we'll play a little, you know, delete game. Like you can't see any of this over here. Okay, so all this is gone. But all you see is this. So the first thing you're going to notice is, oh, we got a double cross right here. I'm marking the level, step one. Okay. Now, look at the time of day. You look down at the time of day and you're like, oh man, it's, uh, it's almost 11 o'clock. Or it is 11, you know, something. Okay. And you're like, ooh, this could be the big trap. We got a big down move. We got a potential bear trap right here. Let's see if we break back through. Now, we have um, two ways that we trade with the double cross scenario. If we do not get a push back up and through that double cross and it continues to move down, we are looking for a double move. Remember this, this is gonna apply to our, to our setup here in just a moment as well. Okay, um, from here to here. So what's the double move? So the double move is gonna be the distance from the original big leg. This is gonna be the impulse leg.
which you, of course you'll learn in, you, most people already know what that is. We teach that as well in our strategies. So your impulse leg comes into this area. And if we see a double cross, our first instinct is if this continues down, we are looking for a double move, literally the exact same size from this location to this location, the same distance. Now we are projecting out from here and this is going to be off the screen somewhere, you know, to do that perfectly. But we would be looking for the completed move to go all the way down farther from the double move, extending to the same distance. Okay, this is accumulation distribution on an impulse leg when we're using the Flowmaster indicator. Okay, you guys follow that so far? And if you don't, again, go back, watch the other videos, take a screenshot of this, know that this is what we're looking for initially. Because when we switch, oh, please tell me I can go back farther. Uh, it's not gonna let me, uh, I just messed up that whole thing. Okay, um, all right, we're gonna redraw that a little bit. Hopefully I can do a good job here. Let's see, so we got price coming down. And we come come on back up. Okay, and we had our two crosses. Maybe I can do it even better this time. Who knows? Doubtful. <laughs> okay. So we got our move down into the area. We can't see this stuff on the right. Again, we're trying to do this in real time. How does this happen? We have our 11 o'clock. 11 something. Okay, Eastern time. Please make sure to note that all of our times are in Eastern time. I'm not going to draw that out here. Now, we get the big, typically starts with a V up. Again, we've got multiples of these. We've got the Bat, we've got the Richie, et cetera. Doesn't matter how it ends up setting up. But when, again, we're looking for the double move first. So initially the double move, but okay, if we reverse, we are thinking no double move here now, and I'm literally thinking a big fat reversal, which can be double move back the other way. Okay, in this case, exactly what happened today. So anytime you see the double cross, start thinking double moves. Got that? Looking for the double move, not the double move in the direction, but now a double move reverse, but it has to be correlated with as we break through this area, my entry point for this that I'm looking for is at that same horizontal um, that we, we had drawn before. Let's go ahead and put that in there. We are looking for an entry long. So as price comes down here, you know, and people are making their decisions and things. I went over yesterday, or not yesterday, but on our, our last Richie straight strategy video where I talk about that trap and in other trap videos, all the traders who get involved with, who are stuck in that trap and how and why and all the psychology of what's going on to them, where they add to their position, all the points at which they are completely mentally wrecked and the position is gonna push the other way. As it comes right about here, we get another cross that comes in. Now it does not have to be right on there. It can be close. Okay. Horseshoes and hand grenades. I don't care if it's here. Okay. I don't care if it's, it could be up here, but we are getting another as this comes back up. This is our entry point as this comes in. This is the flow master reversal. Okay. Now again, you have to have a big trap. Look, there are some times when you're going to see a bunch of crosses in an area and it's just an accumulation zone. We're still going to be accumulating and looking for a distribution path on certain scenarios, but not at this time of day and not when you get a trap that looks like this beast right here. Today was pretty easy to know. And again, during this time of day, we are looking for the big reversal. Okay. Worst case scenario, even let's say that it did come into this area. Where's our stop? Our stops are still going simply below the low of a cross. Got it. You guys know how that goes. You learn this in the Flowmaster videos. Stops at the bottom of the cross always, right? In fact, that, you know what? I'm going to leave those in. Let's, let's put those back in. Okay. Stops are going to be bottom of crosses. We're looking for the long position here, All right? So as this comes in, we've got the trap set. We start to move. We're looking long. And at this time of day, this, you know, in our case, I think it's around like 11.15, 11.20 or so um, that was on today. But this happens a lot. This is not just a scenario I'm like looking at today's thing and trying to make it fit. But we are looking for this big, big move. Now, as it starts to move up, oftentimes what we are looking for to combine this is a J hook, right? First thing after we start catching the move up, I'm looking for the J hook opportunity. Doesn't always have to show up. In fact, this one was pretty shallow today. You almost have a J, but again, almost does, you know, only counts on horseshoes and hand grenades, right? This was not a J hook here today, but you did get a later one, which was awesome. Made it very, very easy to add to position, which again is our half on half off add that we'll talk about. But first steps, looking for the trap, 
looking for the additional cross that comes in. Flow master trap set up right here. Where's our entry? Right here, okay? Our risk, red. Below the cross, right? Again, we're not putting the stop down here. This is a mistake, okay? Don't do that. We're risking just a few ticks. Again, that's why our, uh, you know, our, if you look at our profit factors, we have such huge, huge winners compared to our losers. This is part of that, okay? So make sure you follow all the rules, the risk level on any entry that's using a cross for an entry. Stop is also at the bottom of that cross. Okay? Remember, you can have a two try rule, no three. Three strikes are gonna be out. So two try rule, follow all the rules we already have in our pre-requisite pre videos, and let's move on. Okay, so next step, how do we, while this is showing up, here's what that setup was, right? We had the double crosses coming into this zone, big spike down, coming up. Now, there is there is that third, third marshmallow coming in. Now we had a red dot back behind it, which makes you hesitate a little bit on this because this is a headshot trade short, right? In fact, I would still take this normally as a headshot short only because of time of day. I hesitated on it. I did not take this as a headshot short today, but I took the break of that headshot, which you guys know as a piercer, and this is my first entry long as this broke. I literally waited. I didn't just jump in on that cross. I waited until the headshot broke for my first entry on this setup. Okay, you guys got that? In this case, it became a piercer, very specifically. Red dot, headshot, break of that red dot, boom, we're getting long. Everybody got that? You guys have questions, put those down in the comments down below. Um, we're doing this here tonight. We're not doing a live session, so I'm not getting live feedback with you guys. But um, hopefully down in the comments, we'll still get those questions answered and bring them over there into our chat in the Discord room. And we answered a lot of this today in the room as well. So 11 o'clock Eastern, we're starting to take that move up. Now, my typical first targets are gonna be 10 and 15. Sure enough, got both of those. As we got a red dot right here, I was hesitant. I almost wanted to take this off the table because technically speaking, we've got this double dot shot right here. And if this had broken any more than that, if we had kind of come into this red dot spot, here's where my stop would have been mentally. As this started to break, I got in right here. I got another red dot, which would tell me, hey, I really want to get, I, I may want to be careful with this one. I might want to get short, but my stop is actually right below the first head right here. Okay, because if this was my entry on the head, my stop goes, I know that's a little bit thick. Let me um, make that a little bit smaller if I can. Control Z. And let's scroll that smaller. Stop is below the head. And I don't mind, remember, we're always saying with the stops below the cross, if you, you know, I don't want to say make a mistake, but if you're like, well, which one do I do? Be on the safe side and you can put it down here at the cross. It doesn't matter. Me, I would have had mine probably right here because I know that if that red dot breaks in this, now this is becoming a double dot plus one of these. And we might start to see some additional, um, additional movement like this. And we could do this, right? So I'm always aware that that can't happen. Nothing, none of this is 100%. And I know exactly how this is gonna typically set up. And I've got usually opportunities and times for this to bounce up a little bit. And I'm gonna try to exit with a you know flat position where I'm basically scratching trade on that. And you know it's easy to see in hindsight, but trust me, in real time, if you just follow those rules, keep your stops in the places that we teach it, this is just a video game, okay? And your video game says, put your stop underneath the dot or you put your stop underneath the cross, right? You guys know those rules, you learn that from lessons. Literally, I think that's lesson number one in the risk management, how we enter and exit on our trades. Now, once we're past the break of this, this is your first place to add. We added on the last break of the red dot, we added on the second, right? This is the half on, half off add scenario. Now, when this red dot showed up, um, if you're following the half on, half off rules, you can take half of your position off on that red dot, correct? So if you took half off, then as we break it, what do we do? Half back on. Now, if you're confused by that, you need to go watch the video on this technique. Okay, you'll hear us say this all the time, half on, half off ad. That is a technique you need to go and learn. That is in a video um, called Maximizing Your Winners. And this is what we're doing here today, adding to the position as we go. Okay, so half on, half off. So in this case, we're still at a standard position size. Okay, now standard position can be different for each person. I'm trying to get to 16 contracts. At this point, even when I entered in on this, because of my nervousness about this one right here, I was only in at a half position to start. 
Okay, so I'm in at a half position on this. I could have been in a full position, but in this case, I was in half. And since I was only at a half, I was not worried about closing out my half here either. Another reason why I was not necessarily nervous about closing out half my position here, because I was already at a half position as I kind of started to dip my toe in this to make sure that this was really gonna be one of those that starts to run, okay? Now, as this broke, though, I got to get to a full position, right? So that was exciting for me. As this got the break, boom. We are now, I've got half on right here. I'm adding a half. So at this point, I am now into a full position. And where should my stop be? Okay. Standard default is going to be down here. No, I'm beating that dead horse. But listen, you need to learn how to lose well. You will not be successful if you don't follow these techniques. And if you're really crazy like I was as I added that position, my stop went right here underneath that red dot. I'm willing to risk this little bit because I know that this sucker can run. Okay. I've got my additional i've got my trap right here i got a flow master trap i haven't seen a white cross in any of this just rolling it rolling it rolling it we're riding up the position at this point no red dots to be seen we're holding through the position now i closed out some of my position at i don't know around 15 ticks or so i didn't measure it out i literally just kind of stuck it up and out of there a good distance out um i believe it's somewhere around here for my first target still had the rest of my position on when this came right here on this gartley I added to my position before these white dots showed up, okay? Now, when the white dots started to show up, this is where we know, like, look, look, this could be the end, right? We know that from here to here, this could be the end. When that white dot shows up, when the, I'm sorry, when the white cross shows up, which is a marshmallow in this case, shows up, and now we get the red series of harmonics. But look where the harmonics are. The harmonics are pointing to us that this, um, that this setup for the PRZ is way up here. So I wasn't even nervous. In fact, this white cross right here adds to what? What's right here? We had a green Gartley PRZ right here where we get to add to position. So, you know, the half on, half off, how do we add to our position? We are adding when we get a green signal set up with AlgoBox. So right here, get this nice juicy Gartley to add to my position. Now, I didn't add a full half here. Oftentimes, I'll add half. If this was an actual entry setup, meaning if this was a headshot, if this was a PRZ plus a cross, if it was a PRZ dot, if it was an HMD, you guys know our strategies, but in this case, I'm dipping my toe in the water and I'm adding two contracts here. Not getting to an, a complete half right here because that's not an entry. But if that was an entry, what would we have done? If this was a Gartley plus a dot, okay, we get a dot plus that. Now what am I doing? I am adding half to that position. Now I would be at a 1.5, okay? In this case, I'm at about a 1.25 position size as this position starts to continue to move up, I'm adding in. Now, when the white cross showed up, I had to think to myself, wait a minute, what is this adding to? I see no reds in sight. I added again right here. So I added two and I added two more right here, right? So that means I've now added a quarter position to this. I know I said uh, 1.25 earlier. I guess it was more like a 1.1. But now I'm adding a full quarter position. Again, my position size is 16. You guys should know that already. If you don't, that's my standard position size is 16. So I'm working off of that. So at this point, I've got 16. I'm adding two. I'm adding two more. Right? So we're at 20 contracts riding this position at this point. Right? So again, this is going to be a huge move as this trade continues on. Now, I want to show you guys something. The, the end and the beginning of this whole thing, this is this uh, from here to here, this is 80 ticks. This is an 80 tick move from, from uh, high to low. And the midpoint of this was that 40 tick scenario. Now, how do we know that? Why do I know that this is the center point? Because you see right here, we said indication of the center of the double move. Did we know that ahead of time? Did I know that back here? No. And this is why I'm saying this is a technique that you have to, to learn and watch. And I would recommend download today's market replay data. Today is um, 810. This is August 10th, 2020. Go download today's data in market replay, play this back, execute on it, practice this because this happens way more than just today, folks. This happens a lot. Okay. We can look at example after example of these. You can practice these. When you get another double marshmallow, what did we say before? It's the same double cross rule slash double marshmallow that we learned at the very beginning of this that we talked about and you learned in the Flowmaster stuff. What are we supposed to be thinking when I see a double cross? I'm thinking first, double move, right? I'm first ex expecting a double move in that direction. Now, as the trade moves up and in, if this were to break through, which it almost did, came very, very close. If this breaks through the middle of these, what are we doing then? Now we're expecting, if we get another cross right here, we're actually expecting a breakdown back down, but we didn't, did we? 
No. So, because it's a double cross, we're now expecting the double move in the direction of the previous leg. So, I've got the previous leg. That's what we're showing the distance from here to here. Let me make that a little bit cleaner using a nice little straight shift. The distance of this leg is now the distance that I want to see from here up to here. You guys following this? Very, very simple. I know I've been walking through a whole lot. I mean, you know, they might have gotten lost in this, but now let's break it down to very, very simple terms. My distance from here to here. That's my leg. I got double marshmallows. I'm looking for the double move from there. The execution on the entries, half on, half off add is a technique that you need to learn and practice. That's what I teach in that um, video called Maximizing Your Winners. And we are kind of talking about that now. So the position now is at 20. Now inside of here, I can technically add to this position, but honestly, I got nervous. I was already, you know, I'm, I'm over my one size position. And I know that if this thing keeps going, it's gonna be a big trade anyways at this point of day. So I hold on to this position. I'm just holding at this point. I'm not going to exit um, any of my position on this until I get those red signals. Now, when this started to come through here, when I saw the double, the first thing I thought was, we're going to double up the move. But if it breaks the middle of this location right here, which look how close that got. But what, this is exactly why we have the rules. If we break the middle of this with price, here's where price went right here. Okay. If we break down, if we end up getting price right here, I'm actually expecting a move up into the zone, boom, and some break, and boom, and some break, and we're looking for a continuation down where this becomes one of those nice little curved turtle shells that we, uh, that we also so enjoy and love. Okay. But it did not. It stayed, which means we get to continue the move, which is awesome. Now, up above me about this time, you notice that, look how many PRZs show up. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five of those PRZs. So what does that typically show up like ahead of time? Remember, we use PPRZs. That means that these show up in yellow and I get a ladder. Now, if you don't know what the ladder is, again, these are things you need to learn from other videos. It's kind of hard as I go through these because it's sort of like, how do you cover everything as you go? But you would have seen one of these up above. So what am I expecting with my targets? I can take targets all the way through this ladder, knowing that I'd already put out a line up here, knowing that, look, my final target could be all the way out here, right? The back of that ladder made it very, very easy to know. If I look over to the left, well, that's my final target for my entire double move that I'm looking for anyways. So this was one where it was very easy for me to lay out my targets. I put targets on each one of these little rungs of the ladder, one, two, three, and my final one here on four, exiting that position. What a beautiful trade setup right here. That is the beast mode trade. Now let's look at time of day. This finished to this location. This was right at 12 noon, right? Oops. Nasty looking 12 there, bro. This is a 12 o'clock. Um, to this location, where's the one o'clock? So one o'clock finishes all the way over here, which is literally almost the entire set of that move. Now, the beast mode, again, we're trying to hold that position all the way through. And let's go over to, let's look at the aftermath of this. So when we're looking for that and we see the end of a double move, we're still, we don't just immediately short the other direction, but let me show you guys an example of what Adam Smasher did here today. So as the, as the move continued out, here's one o'clock down here, what showed up? A pink dot. This is our power. This is a pink power dot. Short setup right up here. He's a little bit behind on that, although I think he had additional entries on this, so I think some of these had already been taken off. And we had a green dot right there, so he may have taken some off there. Um, but we ideally, we want that trade set up short, a lot closer to that pink dot than that, and look at what the timing lands on. That pink dot landed right after, that is large, right? That is blue, large timing. How do we know that? We got a blue vertical timing line right there. Yeah, tools do all the work for you. We've got a timing line, it's large, it's a huge power dot move. You can take this short with ease. And if you had done the double move measure, again, he's using a, time, a higher time frame right here. Um, looks like he is. That says ones, but that does not look like, are his crosses broken? Where are his marshmallows at? I don't see those on this chart. Um, but I would have looked at the double move, shown the shown the crosses. We already know where the end of that move is, which we showed from our previous screenshot. Kind of makes it a little bit a little bit easier. You know that the double move was supposed to end right about here, anyways. 
you're at the end of the double move and then you get a pink dot up here I wouldn't say it makes it easy but it doesn't make it hard when that's showing up you've got the double move completion now you've got the algos kicking in which is what is indicated by this right there are multi levels of confluence or at least seven levels of confluence when one of these shows up and you have timing lines so now you're already at a 10 level confluence and then boom you get a nice beautiful breakdown back in the other direction props to adam on that all right so my video has run a little bit long here we're already at 40 minutes i'm trying to keep these at 20 or 30. that is the end of that strategy if you guys have questions come over there in our discord chat i'll leave you with this one go watch our other strategies make sure you guys know that one hope you guys took good notes if you got questions pop those there in the chat box we'll try to get those answered thanks for hanging out for me pippy robbie lunchbot mod squad curtis g and the rest of the gang i'm sitting out that big town see you